All right, I get this question all the time, David. What books should I read if I want to share the gospel with Muslims? Now seems like a good time to answer this question in a video because many of us are going to be stuck at home for a while. Since people around the world are quarantined, what an amazing opportunity to use our time wisely and get some serious reading done. There are lots of good books on Islam, but let me give you a top five list, and I'll even list them in the order you should read them. Side note: Back in January, I posted a video about Greg Kokel's book Tactics. Tactics is foundational. Whenever I recommend books on some given topic, Tactics is always assumed as part of the list. So, if you haven't read Tactics yet, the link is in the description box. Now, if you want to know what you're talking about when you have a conversation with a Muslim, it's a good idea to study ahead of time. Where do you begin? First, if you haven't already read it, start with "Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus" by Nabil Qureshi. Not only is this an excellent introduction to Islam-focused apologetics, it also takes you inside the mind of a Muslim. Apart from that, because it's biographical, it's easy to read and often entertaining, especially when Nabil is writing about a certain super genius friend he met in college. So, seeking Allah, finding Jesus is the best place to start. The link to the third edition is in the description box. By the way, I wrote the appendix in here on the historical Muhammad. Second, after reading Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, go to Answering Islam by Norm Geisler and Abdul Salib. This was the first book I ever read on Islam. I read it while I was in prison. Back then, the cover was purple. This is still probably the best overall introduction to this area of apologetics. The first third of the book explains what Islam teaches without criticizing it. The next third of the book responds to Islamic doctrine. The final third defends Christian claims against Muslim objections. Outstanding book. The link is in the description box. Third, to reinforce what you learn in answering Islam, read "No God But One," also by Nabil. Nabil goes down the line through various topics, comparing Islam and Christianity: Sharia or the Gospel, Tawhid or the Trinity, Muhammad or Jesus, the Quran or the Bible. He lays out a positive case for Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity, and considers Muslim objections. And he lays out the Islamic case for the prophethood of Muhammad and the divine origin. Of the Quran, and then responds. Link is in the description box. Fourth, what's missing? Jihad. But David, what does jihad have to do with witnessing to Muslims? Well, as you may know, I'm a big fan of polemics, showing that Islam is false. The vast majority of the Muslims I know who've become Christians only started taking the gospel seriously after their confidence in Islam was seriously undermined. So polemics is important, and one of the things that starts bothering many Muslims about Islam is the violence that's built into it. Knowing what Islam teaches about jihad and knowing the history of jihad therefore gives you a tremendous advantage. And by far the best book on jihad is Robert Spencer's *A History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS*. This is a fairly long book, but even if you don't think you'll read all of it, I would encourage you to master the first chapter. Which is about Muhammad. If you're motivated, then master the entire book. I'm convinced that if about a thousand people in the world would master the content in this book, it would change the course of history. Because once you understand how persistent and relentless jihad has been over the past 14 centuries, you can run circles around politicians and journalists who spend so much energy babbling about the religion of peace. Link is in the description box. Finally, since the deity of Christ is going to be a key battleground in your discussions, it's extremely helpful to have a thorough, positive case for the deity of Christ. Some of the other books on this list lay out a case for the deity of Christ, but if you want to prepare a particularly strong case ahead of time, I recommend "Putting Jesus in His Place" by Rob Bowman and Ed Komajewski. Bowman and Komajewski use what's called the hands approach, where hands. Is an acronym to help you organize your case for the deity of Christ. Hands, H A N D S. H. You show that Jesus shares the honors that are due only to God. 
A, you show that Jesus shares the attributes of God. N, you show that Jesus shares the names of God. D, you show that Jesus shares in the deeds that only God does. S, you show that Jesus shares the seat of God. This is also a fairly long book. I suggest reading it all the way through, learning the hands approach, and picking out two or three of your favorite Bible passages dealing with each of the points. So, when a Muslim asks, how can you possibly believe that Jesus is God, you'll be ready with a pretty powerful case. Okay, so many of us are going to be stuck indoors for a while. Let's make the most of a bad situation and come out of this better equipped for reaching Muslims with the gospel. Order these five books and start reading, do some highlighting, keep a notebook for your favorite points. And when the quarantines are over and we're all free at last, we can help our Muslim friends be truly free at last.